Hi, I'm Michael, and thank you for watching Aquarium Tech today. Um, I was going to go ahead and just show you how I make uh, zucchini and cucumbers and such for my uh, fish there. Uh, I'm sure some people are interested to know. Um, so, I'll go ahead and get started here. Um, just so you know, I already have the pot heated up here, so you're going to wonder why it starts boiling real quick, or it is right now. Um, so you wouldn't have to wait and basically sit here and watch water boil. Pretty boring. Um, but first thing I do, you don't have to do this, this is just me being paranoid, but you can just, you can just take and add some prime. I mean, it's not just a dechlorinator, you know, it's also a stress reducer for fish when they eat the, what, you know, whatever you'd be giving them. It's better for them, I mean, it's alright. You don't have to do that, like I said. But anyways, um, basically what you want to do is boil this on high with the cap on it. And make sure you know it's boiling hard. You want to get it to a hard boil. Now while we're waiting this to get all the way to a hard boil, I'm going to go ahead and start chopping up what I got. Now today I'm going to be preparing, let's see, this is an English seedless cucumber. They seem to like these a lot better than any other of the cucumbers. And usually they like zucchini better, but since I've been using these uh, seedless ones, they like it better. Um, I wish they made a seedless uh, zucchini here. I mean, without the seeds it makes it a little less mess too, especially when you accidentally leave it in there too long. So... So, and I usually I try to use the organic ones, you know, because I, I don't know it. As much, I don't really believe in organics for myself, but I'm kind of worried about the fish maybe getting some kind of chemicals in there or something. So, that's the only reason I use it. You don't have to use it because I, in fact, didn't use them before and it works just fine. So, but anyways, we'll go ahead and chop this up. I usually cut the head and the very round of it off. Don't need that. Now this one, of course, is a zucchini. And I cut them at various different lengths. Just for whatever I might be doing it for. Because I have a bunch of fish that, that'll eat this, so... But of course, you know, you cut it to your specific length. You know, whatever you use it for. You know, if you're using it for, like, auto catfish, you probably only need it really thin. If you're using it for like loaches, you might want to put it a little bit thicker, or other catfish, you probably want to have it thicker too. You know, and even for placosmus, you want about, you know, medium, kind of a medium uh, thickness there. Alright, and here's the zucchini. Let me just stack it up here. It's going to fall down. Okay, and then here's the cucumber. I found a monster cucumber here. And I'm going to get this rattled off. And of course I just leave them in the fridge while I'm waiting to prepare them here. That's just the pot rising up and down if you hear that, because it's, like I said, I already had it come to a boil before the I even started the video here, just so it would be easier. And of course, the same as the zucchini, I usually cut the front. Do the same thing, cut it to various lengths.
finish the cucumber. There's that. All right. And usually what you want to do is to be delicate with them because, uh, especially when they get all hot, you won't, you know, you want to be delicate with them. I usually just take a big spoon and I lower and rise them out of there. So let me wait till this gets back up to a really hard boil real quick. It'll only take a few moments. Throw this out on. And you can make more if you want. This is just what I'm making for tonight. And especially if you do it this way and you store it in the freezer and stuff, it can last for a while. So, it's about ready. Okay. And remember when you're filling the pot with water to leave a little bit of room to, uh, you know, for the zucchini and the cucumbers, of course, you know, because it'll... Uh, like the first time I did this, I accidentally overflowed the water out of it, so. I left a lot of room for it too and it's still almost overflowing. got it in there usually the key for zucchini and cucumbers is three minutes so because it was pretty big I'm surprised how big it was um probably gonna leave it in there for just over three minutes maybe like three and a half minutes but that's usually like the magic number for these so I'm gonna go ahead and just let it cook for three minutes and I'm gonna get usually what I store it in And then usually I just store it in like a container like this. Uh, that way, you know, it's pretty easy to deal with. Uh, you just open it, throw it in there, and then you can just grab whatever you want out. This is where I keep all my vegetables, and as you can see, it's empty for my fish. Um, so, you know, it makes it a little bit easier. And of course, remember when you you know when this is done and you take them out you want to put them if you have like two freezers or whatever you want to try to put it in the coldest freezer you have and make sure it's at the coldest temperature you want it to freeze as fast as it as you know as fast as you can get it to freeze so and you want to get it in here as quickly as possible and another tip try to get the least amount of water in there as you can now using this spoon it's a little bit harder um, but, you know, you, I, I try to be delicate with it so I don't break it or help it because it gets really mushy, especially when it's wet and hot. So that's why I use a spoon. But, you know, I just take and, you know, let the water drip out because what happens is if you let the water get in here and, of course, you freeze it, then the cucumbers and the zucchinis get all stuck together and it's really hard to get them apart. You have to, like, chip them with, like, a screwdriver or something. Pain in the butt. And not only that, it can actually ruin your container and stuff, like here, I was trying to open it and some of the water got here and it like froze over and I couldn't get it open and actually broke one of the tabs on it. And of course you want to have a sealed container as well, so it helps to keep the freshness in.
still got a couple more minutes here. Yeah, see, imagine if I had just started it with cold water. Yeah, this would have been pretty boring, huh? said I'm going to be cooking mine a little over three minutes. I was a pretty monster sized cucumber. But usually three minutes is going to do the trick. And of course if the top keeps rising up like mine does, usually what I do is I just hold down on it with the spoon like that and that way it won't start rising and make that noise. Oh, come on. Let's go. And, and if it gets really bad where it starts boiling over, even if you're holding it on there, you just want to go ahead and turn the heat down a little bit, maybe turn it to like mid or low, but you want to make sure it keeps boiling. That's the key. You want to make sure it's boiling at all times. And a hard boil at that. Now, I know when you put the vegetables in, the boil is going to kind of go away because the vegetables, the vegetables are going to be cold. But, uh, you know, that's not a big deal. Just put it back on high. Alright, sorry about that. I had to uh, split the video there. My camera couldn't record the whole thing. Anyways, I basically have pretty much all of it here in the box, but I'll show you how I take it out. Anyways. But basically... Like I said, I like to use a spoon just to be delicate with the vegetables. And then take it and make sure you kind of get the water out of it. Like I was saying earlier, it's a pain in the butt. Once it fr once that water freezes, it gets like stuck in the container. And you just drain it out like that. And in fact, um, even if you can real quick, try to get it like this and just, you know, dump it out in like your sink or something. Take like your spoon and careful because the vegetables as you can see here are going to try to get out. See if you use a spoon it's pretty much inevitable that you're going to get a little bit of water in there but see it's, not, it's pretty easy to get out not a huge deal. And of course you just seal it up. Get that air out and put it in the freezer. you want to try to do that as fast as you can, okay? Alright, um, I guess if you have any questions on it, just uh, send me a message. Thanks for tuning in.